Hi everyone, good morning. My name is Marcin Kisio from the University of Basel. Part of my contribution I would like to, to actually co show you that uh, dissipation signal atomic force microscope can couple, can sense uh, correlated insulating states or phases of graphene at the magic angle. So the ANVI look uh, sort of standard, so at the beginning a few words of introduction, then a bit about technique. Uh, the results I divided into three parts. First part, I will explain you our atomic force microscopy dissipation spectra. Then I will tell about uh, basically it's a local probe technique. So I will tell a bit a little bit about the determination of the twist. We can't hear you. I will tell a bit about uh, determination of the twist angle distribution, and then I will show some results that we maybe. Yeah, we're working on it, uh, dissip energy dissipation on how correlated and insulating phases of twisted Bilea graphene responds to magnetic field. I will finish with conclusion. So what is twisted Bilea graphene? There are two uh, sheets of graphene that are twisted with respect to each other. And there is this magic angle twist, which is equal to 1.08 degree. And uh, the twist uh, of the magic angle leads to creation of the supercell uh, in the reciprocal space, we, we, we have uh, this twist leading to creation of the mini brillouin zone. Here below you see the energy structure as it depends on, on, the, on the angle twist. And what is, what is really characteristic for the system is that the angle, which is equal to 1.08, we have really flat bands created at the Fermi level. So flat bands, yeah, that's the moment there. So flat bands basically means that the kinetic energy of electrons is negligible and the Coulomb interaction takes over and the system is driven by strongly correlated electrons. So the physics can be quite uh, exotic. So we could enter phases like mod transition or even superconductivity in such a systems. And this was already, that, that, that uh, phenomena was already demonstrated. Most of, the, most of the results, if you look at the literature about twisted belay, if you just Google it, you will find out two types of techniques uh, that uh, senses the strongly correlated insulating phases of twisted belay graphene. One is capacitive detection. So basically we have a layer of graphene. On top there is, there is gate, which is more or less size of few or several micrometer. And if the capacity of the, capacity of the or capa quantum capacitance of the twisted big bilayer graphene changes, we have drop of the of the cap of the yeah we can basically detect this drop of the capacitance by the, this gate. Here for in this example, we see drop at half filling. At half filling, we can exactly we exactly inject two electrons into mini mini brillouin zone. Maximum we can have four electrons in the mean for the mini brillouin zone in such a system. You, on the right side, you see transport, da transport measurements data. So this is resistance versus doping concentration. And what you see on this graph, that for the magic angle twist, we have some rises of the resistance. For example, at, at CPD, this is most probably to electron hole scattering. But you also see some jumps for half filling, a bit of for threefold filling, and a bit a, lo a lot of rise of this uh, of in, uh, resistance for for full filling. So in this particular cases, we inject two electrons in the mini brillouin zone. This is for n, n equal two, or four electrons for full filling. You see also that uh, the, the spectrum depends very strongly on the twist angle. So this is a bit smaller twist angle, what you can see here. And uh, yeah, basically, the charge concentration is basically uh, depends on the, queen, the twist angle, like twist angle to the power two. And uh, yeah. Full feeling for the graphene is given with this formula when A is the lattice constant of the graphene. Okay, so what is uh, our technique and why it's different from the techniques uh, I showed you before? So this is a pendulum force, atomic force microscope. So it's a cantilever that is suspended like a tiny pendulum over the surface. So it oscillates parallel to the, surf, uh, to the surface. So it shares a tiny vacuum gap between surface and the tip. 
the, the, the reason for the suspension is quite clear. We use extremely soft cantilevers. So if you just come with normal suspension, like standard FM geometry, you will just snap to the contact. So we want to avoid the snapping. Quality factors are quite high, even in the order of, of, of one million. And uh, on this graph, I, I show you comparison of uh, typical dissipated power of different technique versus its spatial resolution. So I would like to point, draw your attention to this comparison between tuning fork, this talk you have seen yesterday, given by Remy, show you that tuning fork, due to its, its very high amplitude stability, it offers you a very high uh, spatial resolution, but it's several order, a few orders of magnitude less sensitive to the dissipative forces as compared to, as compared to pendulum IFM. So pendulum of IFM, this minimum dissipated power is in the order even of a uh, fraction of attovats. Yeah, well, it's not the best imaging tool. You see that, uh, well, basically, spatial resolution is few nanometers. So what is... This is our system. Once again, the pendulum IFM, oscillating like a, uh, like a basically oscillating cantilever gate, we can apply voltage to it. For most of the measurements I will show you today, we keep those cantilever grounded just for simplicity, but you can independently apply voltage to it and play with the, with the electric state of the tip. What is important that we can apply voltage to the back gate electrode. Back gate electrode is the silicon, p-doped silicon, and you can tune doping of this silicon. This silicon, there is, a, there is an oxide on this silicon. There is our twisted bilayer graphene device deposited. And by changing this voltage gate, you can tune doping. You can dope basically our twisted bilay graphene with electrons or with holes as you want it. We have also source drain. For most of the measurements I show you today, we keep them grounded. What you can see here, okay, measurements were also performed in ultra high vacuum and low temperatures. What you see here, it's the, it's the formula I wrote, drove. This is formula for joule dissipated power for atomic, for mechanical oscillator basically. And you see that the uh, joule dissipation or IFM dissipation, pendulum dissipation should be proportional to resistivity. This is raw. So uh, this is not so easy, this is not so difficult to, to understand. And basically, we can, you can imagine that you have some static charges at the end of your tip, then you oscillate, the static charge creates image charge in your sample, and when, as you oscillate, you create some, some oscillating current in the sample. If the resistance of the sample rises, joule dissipation rises, that leads to rise of dissipation. You see also that uh, there is also capacitance gradients in the formula. That means that if the quantum capacitance of the, device, of the device changes, so density of states of this device changes, this should also re lead to the rise of dissipation. If you remember those two measurements I showed you at the beginning, these transport measurements when we measure resistance and the capacitive measurement, we measure capacitance. It's not so surprising that we should actually, the pendulum IFM should detect, just looking at the formula, should detect these correlated isolating phases of twisted belay graphene. So this is our device. So first you have, I told you before that it's not maybe the best imaging device, but you, well, basically that's our sample. Uh, you have to find it. So you, you can imagine you have a five by five milli millimeter sample and you have one on this sample surface of one device which is few by few microns and you have to find it. So it depends on your, on your experience and on your motivation. It takes from two days for to two weeks. So this device, this is this rectangle, I'll mark it with this red rectangle. This device is uh, contacted with eight wires. So you have four at the bottom. This is five, six, seven, eight. And this is how it looks like, uh, again, schematics. So, uh, backgate voltage is applied to p-doped silicon. There is 300 of nanometers oxide, silicon oxide that couples our twisted bilayer graphene to the backgate. The sample is capped with 10 nanometers of HBN just to protect. On top of it, we have our cantilever that we can apply voltage to it, but most of the cases, as I told you before, we keep it grounded. Source the drain, we keep it grounded at all times. So we have our gate that is coupled capacitively to the underlying twisted bilayer graphene through the 10 nanometers of HBN. This HBN, for us, is equivalent to 40 nanometers of vacuum because dielectric constant of HBN is 4. Thickness of this HBN is 10 nanometers, so 4 times 10 is like 40 nanometers of vacuum. So we can see or we can detect the phenomena that literally exist below the surface. 
And this is raw data, our spectrum. So what you see on the y-axis is the dissipation. On the x-axis is backgate voltage. So this is this voltage that we can apply to this p doped silicon. We have, we have electron side, as you can see. This is above zero. And we have hole side. What you can see, you see, you see series of dissipation peaks. So there's one here, a small one. There is a quite big one here. A very big one there. And if you look carefully, you see that the, on the whole side, it's kind of mirrored, but it's, it's kind of stretched. This is due to creation of the depletion zone for the positive voltage applied, for the negative voltage applied to the back gate. So this, it's easy to correct. Uh, just simple, simple transformation allows you to correct for that. What we see also, uh, that there is some small from the zero point, so symmetry point is shifted by, so CPD shift is shifted by eight volt. This is due to disorder density that is present in the sample. So now our task is to re uh, convert this backgate voltage into doping concentration. This is extremely easy if you know backgate capacity or backgate sheet capacitance. And this you know because you know the uh, dielectric constant of silicon dioxide, you know the oxide, thick, oxide thickness, you can easily calculate the backgate capacitance. And then, by this simple linear transformation, uh, you, you convert your backgate voltage into doping concentration. Q is the, the elementary charge. Uh, we notice by, by doing that that our graphene is not uh, exactly 1.08 degree twisted. The angle is roughly like 1.1 degree. And for the full feeling, the charge density is equal to this value. So when you make this linear, when you convert backgate voltage into doping concentration, your spectra look like this. You also take care about this depletion layer creation on the whole side. So you see everything is symmetric, everything is bring to zero, and we have series of peaks, dissipation peaks, and the position of those peaks exactly corresponds to fractional filling of the uh, correlated isolating states of twisted bilayer graphene. So at a, a one four filling, when you have an one electron per mini boolean zone injected into flat bands, there is a small peak. At half filling, when you have two electrons per mini boolean zone injected into flat band, we have a peak for three electrons. And for full filling, we also have a series of dissipation peaks. From this uh, CPD shift, we can easily determine the disorder density. And this is in the, the number is 5, 10 to 12, I guess. No, 10. Yeah, 10 per centimeter square. If you compare this with the literature, the, the, it's pretty much corresponding to the values that were already reported in the literature. In the literature. Again, I told you before that we kept the tip grounded, but uh, the spectra which you show here, so what you see on this, on this, on this map is actually dissipation, dissipation map. So the contrast is, is the excitation. So red line or red contrast is the high dissipation. On the X axis, you have backgate voltage. On the top of the Y axis, you have voltage applied to the tip. So the, the spectrum which is shown here, this is for the tip voltage grounded. It's just a profile along this white dash line. Yeah. So what you see on this on this graph is that we apply when we, if we are, when we apply voltage to the tip, we just introduce displacement electric field from the tip, and this shifts our position of our of our dissipation peak. This is extremely practical graph to know. Uh, it's extremely important graph to know for practical reasons because if you know the slope of this uh, of this dissipation peak, you can quantify the level arm. So ratio between backgate capacitance to the tip sample capacitance. And if you want to say something quant quantitatively about the system, you have to know these things. You have to know these quantities like tip cap sample capacitance or backgate capacitance. So uh, as I say, our method is local. So it's, uh, we can actually determine the twist angle at any spot of our device. So we basically came to this left, uh, left top corner of our device. And we, the, we acquire spectra for different points across this, this line. And if we now mm, we match the position of the dissipation peaks to the super lattice density, we can determine the twist angle for every, for every single spot of the device.
And this is the histogram of this uh, twist angle. So you see that our, uh, well, it's quite pretty, pretty good device, I have to say. So the main twist angle is 1.06, plus minus 3 to 4% um, error on this, uh, for, for 50 different spectra. So we have some relaxation. I mean, nothing is perfect, and of course this twist angle also relaxes, so there is some, there is some angle relaxation from place to place. This angle, this angle relaxation, we can actually map. So there's another way to basically track this angle distribution, is to perform the constant high dissipation images. So basically we position our tip roughly around 100 nanometers above the sample surface, and we, we adjust the voltage to fractional feeding, like one four feeding or half feeding, and we acquire this contract dissipation map. So what we expect, is that uh, if we cross the domain of different angle relaxation, we expect the change of, of the dissipation contrast. This is, in fact, what you see. So what you see, you have to, I mark these domains by the, by the dotted lines. So you see domains that are more or less a few hundred nanometers in size. What you also see, you see some features which is characteristic for Coulomb, Coulomb ring. So we have something on the sample, which could be like a defect, or in fact, due to manufacturing process, is pretty common, but when the guys manufacture a device, there are some, some out-of-plane deformation, and we know that they can in effectively act as a quantum dot, so this is from the single electron charging, most probably, but you have to remember that we have domains of a few hundred nanometers. These domains are most probably domains of different angle relaxation. We also notice that within the, from domain to domain, they domain the, the domains they have they could have also different, different charge concentration because we noticed that we have some changes of contact potential difference from domain to domain. Not only twist angle relaxation, but also charge relaxation. And now the magnetic fields come to enter, so we are now at half feeding. So again, similar image of uh, domains of different angle relaxation, with most probably some Coulomb rings, this is for magnetic field zero, for half feeling, and now when we apply magnetic field, which is two Tesla, there is a, we, we observe complete disappearance of the, of the, of the domain contrast. We attribute this, this phenomena to magnetic field polarizing of the charge states uh, uh, via spin, via spin. So magnetic field basically induces induces uh, some Zeman splitting. So in the uh, for magnetic field zero, we have this with strongly correlated uh, energy gap. We, we can call it mod gap. And when the magnetic field is uh, different than zero, the this gap is closed due to due to Zeman shift, and the domains disappear. We have still some remnants of the single Coulomb blockade. Similar phenomena was also similar closing of the gap was also observed in transport a bit field that were reported were slightly larger, like four Tesla. Now it comes the feeling, which is a bit larger, which is three, four feeling, also fractional. Yeah, yeah. okay, I'm almost on my end. So um, uh, at, uh, feeling, which is three, four, so between three, four and full feeling, we observe something that we called, uh, well, oscillations. So you see dissipation versus magnetic field starts to oscillate, so we have this moustache of the oscillations, and at the beginning we were thinking that this could be uh, characteristic like Shubnikov, the Haas oscillations, but there are two problems with that. Shubnikov, uh, the Haas will require magnetic uh, Fermi surface, and this is in fact uh, insulating state, so it can, this Fermi surface cannot be magnetic, and the, and the periodicity distribution has to have a special, special, yeah, special uh, behavior like one over B. So this is also uh, not the case here, especially at, point, at magnetic field equals zero, we should see no oscillations. If it would be Shubnikov the Hazen, we see that even for magnetic fields equals zero, we see oscillations. So we talk to our, our uh, okay, this is again the, the, we try to determine this periodicity of this, of this magnetic field oscillation. So you see that we have, we have some distribution of periodicity. Of periodicity, so we, we have periodicity from five, millitesla up to 15 millitesla. So we talked to our colleagues from transport uh, community and they, uh, they told us that actually similar um, periodicity distribution were observed already in transport and this is related to magneto, magneto oscillations in graphene PN junctions. So basically when you have a domains of different, uh, of different uh, church, uh, uh, of different uh, 
yeah, charge, uh, charge state, let's say, like n doped and p doped, different doping, let's say. Magnetic field uh, drives the charges in opposite direction. If the, if the magnetic field is big, big enough, these charges can interfere. The, the, the currents of wave functions, actually, it's quantum, magne, quantum mechanical interference, can interfere and lead to, to uh, oscillations in the conductance, like here or here, with periods which are pretty close to ours. And these oscillations are known as a, as a bon Aharonov bon oscill uh, oscillations. So uh, the only thing that uh, the period of aharon bohm oscillations is, um, uh, should be given by this formula, the, the, the magnetic flux, which is enclosed by this, by this domain of different, of different, of different charge, it must be equal to uh, magnetic, field, magnetic field quanta. And if we know the, our periodicity, and we know it, we have it from our FFT, we can actually estimate uh, S, so the, the effective size of a magnetic domain, and compare with, our, with, with the image that we measured. And if we do that, we finish with the numbers, which is like 500 by 500 nanometers, which is pretty much in correspondence with what we observe in our images. So we, we indeed have domains of few hundred by few hundred nanometers, and that would pretty much correspond to Bona Haranov type of scenario. So that brings me to the conclusion. Sorry for beating a bit late. Uh, so there are several conclusions. Maybe I would just stick to the most important. So it's possible to couple mechanical oscillator to the quantum device, and this has some, 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 some consequences. For example, Akash is now working on the on the uh, qubit of the whole qubits. So if you want to detect the qubit or change the, change the, the charge states of the qubit, you have to have a possibility to somehow come with something from microscopic world to this, to this quantum device and be able to sense or change the charge state. And I believe Pendulum IFM, or actually IFM in general gives you this possibility. Uh, if you compare the method, these local probe methods with, let's say, transport, you see that the spectres are much cleaner. They are, we, have, we are basically free from, from parasitic resistance effects. So we are free from all the contacts imperfections, all the Schottky junctions, they are not there. So basically transport people, they have to have really clean devices in order to measure something. Sometimes in order to measure something, they need to have some, they need to even dope the system to be able to detect any current. And if you already dope the system too much, all the physics that you expect that low doping can be just gone. Yeah. So this is advantage of this scanning probe approach. So that's the system. I thank you for your attention. And I thank also several people that contributed to the work, especially Alexina Olia. This is a big part of, big part of this, of this research. This is actually have a PhD project, of course, the EST, URS, and Akash. Yeah. And thank you for your attention. Yeah. Okay. Thank I'm you. Glad to take your questions. We've run quite a bit over time, so my suggestion is, since now is a coffee break, um, fuck much in about his talk during the coffee break. Um, the next session we will move by 10 minutes, um, so we'll start at 11.20, and the coffee will be served on the terrace um, outside. So thank you, and I'll see you in 25 minutes. <laughs>